our music, and we have failed to get the um, text. Doing we haven't way. given enough money to the BBC. There we <laughs> On the other hand, I'm paid a lot of money. <laughs> How much? <laughs> I ain't saying. Transparency. <laughs> Nobody yeah, knows about text in the house. Are there? The press buttons? Yeah. Right. I'm reading. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much indeed, Minister, for finding the time to come to us. Emily, it's always a great pleasure to be intimate. I love the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> As I understand. <laughs> You've been offered the post of Brexit Minister for Food Security by both our prospective leaders. Briefly, can you tell us why they believe you're the right man for such a powerful new portfolio? Well, I eat a lot of food, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and the House of Commons dining room has a really wide range. Also, I'm a great supporter of Brexit. And Brexit, of course, is going to allow us. <laughs> to control the food that we bring to our borders. <coughs> Minister, <laughs> we're being uh, quiet at the back. <laughs> we're being warned that if it's a no deal, we'll be out of fresh food and pharmaceuticals within weeks, if not days. Surely that's a problem for any government, whoever's in charge. Well, we've got David Rutley to deal with that. I mean, David Rutley is the Under Secretary, and he is responsible for all of these minor problems like food, <laughs> like, 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 like food shortages and, 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 and global warming. <laughs> and if I might just refer to my notes here, uh, Boris Johnson recently said, there will be drinking water whatever happens. <laughs> And there will be milk solids and glucose and whey for our Mars bar. So, I mean, I don't see any real short-term problems, especially when we've got uh, an executive from the supermarket to run the thing. <laughs> no short-term problems, then. Presumably, there are plans in place for special powers to ensure food security. Uh, what sort of powers do you recommend? Oh, very, very, very great powers, Emily, very great powers. We have power to control all of the food that crosses our borders from anywhere in the world. So how will you make, it, how will you make a deal with the, ten, with the ten multinationals, we'll call them big food, who control most of the world's food supply? Well, Emily, we, we have a really good relationship with these companies. <laughs> <laughs> Even if their headquarters are outside the UK? Well, that helps with, that helps with their tax arrangements. <laughs> you mean they don't pay tax? Well, they do pay tax, I mean, just not here. <laughs> <laughs> so we accept the status quo. Does that have anything to do with members of our own government who have close connections with the ten companies? Well, man, these connections are very valuable. <laughs> you mean they hand over huge amounts in political donations and spend a fortune on lobbying? Well, we, we can only use the power if these connections are kept private. <laughs> you mean you can only use the power of those connections if outsiders don't know about them? No. Uh, well... Outsiders like the vote? No, no, I was actually thinking more outsiders like the countries of Europe. There's Not one reason why cutting ourselves off and taking back control makes such sense. So outsiders Which such as the voters? We've got our script, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Which won't be easy. Which won't be easy when the World Economic Forum says food security is a global problem that can only be solved through global cooperation. And it's all in the Global Risks Report, which, of course, everybody has read. Mm -hmm. Surely that matters. Well, Emily, the world's full of reports. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the report that's just been suppressed by the Trump government, that the vitamin content of rice is going down as the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere is going up? It's science, Emily. It's just science. <laughs> <laughs> based on solid scientific research that there's enough food to feed the world, only politics, war and corruption disrupt its distribution.
Well, Emily, it's a matter of taking a balanced view. <laughs> <laughs> our balanced view is that we're here to serve our constituents, especially those who voted for us. <laughs> so it's a matter of just hanging on to power? Well, the power to do good, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a specific example. In 2016, your government introduced the soft drinks industry levy, otherwise known as the sugar tax which came into effect last year, but already one of your prospective leaders is talking about removing it. That's a very nice dress, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Emily, it's a, it's a tax on the poor. We know that, it's a tax on the poor. It has been introduced in many poor countries, and the World Health Organization says that the financial benefits to the poor from reducing obesity in countries like Mexico, which indeed we have actually been experiencing the scene, as I remember, um, far outweigh the cost of the tax. Well, maybe educated British people are a lot better at using the evidence to make their own decisions. Oh. 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 <laughs> the manufacturers certainly seem to be. The evidence is that the tax is driving them to develop new drinks with much lower addictive sugar content. Oh, but let's move on. <laughs> you talked a lot about gathering power, gaining power by taking back control. But how much power can we have if we cut ourselves off from the rest of the world? Well, lots of power, Emily. Uh, by cutting ourselves off, we have the ability to make deals, to negotiate for deals, to get away from these cooperative agreements and to do better for ourselves. And what if the other side uses the same tactics? Well, but we're really good negotiators. I mean, look at Brexit. <laughs> Trump, look, look at Brexit. Look at Brexit. Look at Brexit. <laughs> With the greatest possible respect, Minister, can I remind you of the tragedy of the Commons? Well, the House of Commons has always been a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the problems that arise when everyone pursues their own self-interest at the expense of cooperation. Hang on, just let me look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Tragedy of the Commons. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do something about that once we've got the power. <laughs> That's not what the very famous Len Fisher says in his best-selling book. <laughs> he says you need really powerful incentives to maintain cooperation. Uh, our Minister, let's move on to a different sort of power. There are claims that some foods take a huge amount more power and energy to produce than others. And there are also claims that the world agricultural system itself is a significant contributor to global warming, both directly through gas emissions and because much of the energy to produce the food that Westerners want to eat is still coming from the burning of fossil fuels. Do you have the power to deal with that? Well, Emily, these are pretty big claims. <laughs> and in any case, we've got David Rutley to deal with the global warming yeah. thing when he's got time off from his other business. <laughs> but these claims are backed by pretty big evidence, including some that comes from the Future of Humanity Institute, right here in Oxford, right just down the road. Well, yeah, but these are academics. <laughs> and my concern is with the real world. <laughs> But, Minister, doesn't the globally interconnected real world hold the actual power when it comes to controlling our food supplies? That's what the World Economic Forum believes, and it's certainly what some of your constituents think. Some have even decided to become self-sufficient. Well, I, mean, I have to admit that we're taking some precautions. I mean, we've turned the back of number 10 Downing Street into a vegetable garden. <laughs> <laughs> we're working it up. Feed the nation. <laughs> That'll be a relief for the voters, and the new PM will have enough potatoes. <laughs> Seriously, though, isn't it true that whatever we do, Britain will still be a net importer of food, and the food supply is just part of a complex network that involves energy, water, land, and labour? Well, Emily, I'm glad you mentioned labour, because that's, <laughs> <where, laughs> that, 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 that's where our real advantage lies. Because labour in the third world is dirt cheap. And by buying our food from the third world, we can get it much cheaper than if we grow it ourselves. Whatever the cost in slavery and child labour. Well, the companies involved are upping their game there, really. <laughs> Do you mean that changes in company policy are a direct result of public pressure after Oxfam blew the whistle? Well, 
Emily, not entirely. <laughs> not I mean, you, you've, you've got to consider the shareholders as well, you know. I mean, that's why Nestle warned that weeding out slavery would cost us so much that it might actually raise the price of food and lower profits. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it true that the third world countries that provide most of the world's food are also those who are going to be the most affected by global warming? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, ma ma maybe so, Emily, but I mean, it's not really our problem. <laughs> <laughs> we still hold the financial whip hand. We're still in control. <laughs> you mean like the World Bank is the part who offer loans to third world farmers so long as they produce food for the West, but are unable to afford it for themselves? Well, that's economics, Emily. <laughs> like the economics that Monsanto quotes when they insist that third world farmers plant only Monsanto seeds and can have farmers jailed if they continue to exchange and plant their own, which seems to apply to all farmers. There's a grower in Tennessee who's in jail for disobeying company rules. Well, it's market forces. <laughs> but if others are being controlled by market forces, surely we are too. Do we have any power at all? Well, yes, Emily, we, we have the total power to control the flow of food across our borders. Can you give me an example, Minister? Well, uh, not really, but... <laughs> <laughs> you have no power at all? Is that the time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to wind this up. I've got a meeting with some food producers that I've got to get organised. <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Minister. <laughs> well, thank you, Emily, thank you very much. Uh, do you know any good local restaurants, Chinese or Italian? You can have to look for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>